Okay, plain and simple. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, and just know there's a lot of stuff going on out there. And a lot of people are, are, they know I got a lot of information, but they're just not sure because of different things that they're in disagreeance of. Well, one thing we're in agreement of, Jesus Christ, plain and simple. Something's about to go down. I got the information. I can tell you the intricities of the complexities in a simplified way. It's already all there. It's already laid out on the table. The only problem is I don't got enough people sitting at it. Now, what I want is I'm calling for the pride to drop, I'm calling for the separation to drop. I'm calling for the one thing to stand true and remain, and that's our unity and our belief and our faith through Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ, if you want him to be called Yeshua, if you want him to be called Messiah, if you want him to be called whatever you want, we know we're all talking about that same one, that who has come to set the captives free, and that is the living Son of God who was put on that cross and who was destroyed by the religious authorities of the day because they rejected his message and they conspired to bring him there. That's who we're talking about. Don't matter what way you want to call him, I call him Jesus for one simple reason, because it is the most recognized name in the entire world to identify his work, his life, and his mission. Exactly. So there are people that do not know what Yeshua and all of these other phraseologies that you want to throw out. But when I say Jesus, the world over knows exactly who I'm talking about. So the lips of the letter are confused, but the heart is not. And who does the heart find its faith in and where does the father find your truth he knows your heart okay not the letter the letter is a cultural interpretation of an original identity and then that identity is seen throughout many cultures and then reinterpreted in different names it doesn't matter get the name game off your lips and get the real identity and the truth of a high the highest spirit manifestation this world has ever seen it's not a man that doesn't have man's names and then he is the god not only to this world but to the billions and trillions of worlds all over that don't speak an english language that don't speak a hebrew language okay they don't call him yeshua they call him a trillion billion other things you're thinking too small you're thinking too small get your head out the name game Get your head out of the separation that books and creeds and colors and all these numbers and all these things are separating us. The only thing that's bringing us together at this time is one simple truth, and that is Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior over all. Plain and simple. He is the way, and it is a narrow path. Many people fall by the way because of their foolish pride because they're bound up in some sort of crystallized traditional view that if you begin to shatter it, they begin to shatter themselves. And you see it. You see the distortion in the words. You see the manifestation of the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone that's coming out of them. And I don't know any other way to reach you than to just show you and to tell you. A rose is a rose by any other name. is still just a rose. So it doesn't matter what you call Jesus. The name can't change who Jesus is. It can just change your perception of him. And I see it's changing it. It's changing our perception of the life. The importance is the life that he lived. Okay? And if you want to know, if you want to, if you want to align yourself with this importance of his death, well, then you align yourself up with the Catholic religion because that's what they find important. Lo and behold, what do they put on as an idol to look on the wall? The dead Jesus, not the living one. Not the living one. Not the living one. So his, his power is in the life that he lived. That is being shown to us how to walk it through this valley of the shadow of death. That we are all going to have to trot on by our own feet, but being led by the Spirit the whole way. Please understand. We are the boat. Jesus is the captain. We do the work. He pay the wage. We're riding upon the words of his waters. He's not going to let us sink. But the winds of the world have changed and they've brewed up a storm upon these waters. So the bow of the boat, which is us, the leaders, the believers in Jesus Christ, we're about to take the most turbulent waves. But all we have to do is trust in the captain who's going to guide us through. And he will bring us to these shores of a perfect, peaceful paradise. All you got to do is believe. I'll be back.